So I, I would just like to um, introduce everyone to the, our Penfield Business Community Series, Health Insurance Choices in Retirement. Um, my name is Amy Valenti and I'm the Penfield Business Chamber President and we want to welcome you to this community series. This program is co-hosted and promoted with Penfield Public Library, so we really appreciate that. And we thank Peggy O'Neill for coordinating. The session is being recorded to allow members to view the presentation if they are unable to join. And if you have questions, you're welcome to put your questions in the chat box and they will be answered either as things are progressing or at the end. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Vicki James and her husband, Terry James, who are independent insurance agents specializing in group and individual Medicare, employee benefits, long-term care, health, and life insurance. They have clients who are located across Western New York, specifically the Rochester area and surrounding counties, and they combine personalized insurance advice aimed at helping clients make informed decisions for their unique needs. And not only does Vicki support her clients through health insurance options, but she mentors a team of brokers within the area and along the East Coast. And she's licensed in not only New York, but Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, Florida, and the District of Columbia. Yeah. So we thank you for joining us for this informative event. Thank you. Thanks so much. We really appreciate this. Um, we did this last year about this time um, and had great feedback. And so we were so pleased when the Penfield Chamber and the Penfield Library asked us to, to repeat it. So thank you so much. Um, we've been doing a little check in to see where everyone is in their health insurance needs. And um, we're going to do a whole overview of health insurance before you hit 65 and then health insurance when you hit 65. When you have questions, please throw them in the chat box. Um, and like Amy said that, um, you know, throughout the presentation, if we find that, you know, maybe something we talked about wasn't 100% clear, we'll stop and go back. Um, we'll also uh, um, answer questions at the end as well. This presentation will be about an hour and um, we will stay after that hour as long as everybody um, has questions. Great. So again, um, our business is called Medicare Easy and Health Insurance Easy. And so we span between under 65 health insurance all the way through um, over 65 health insurance. And we've been in business uh, since 2016. And Terry and I, um, we are partners in this business and we are also partners in life. We're gonna celebrate our 30th wedding All anniversary right. <laughs> in October. <laughs> All right, so um, what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about uh, health insurance for those who are not yet Medicare age, typically 65 and older. Uh, what happens when you're approaching your 65th birthday? Um, Medicare age, but maybe have been working past 65, and then those who are already on Medicare but want to know some more information. We're also going to talk about the New York State Marketplace Exchange, traditional health insurance, and additional Medicare coverages such as like Advantage plans, supplement plans, prescription drug plans. We'll talk about penalties and enrollment periods as well. So who should be attending? Who should be here? Um, any kind of retirees. If you're under or over 65, this is the place to be. And then those who are thinking about retiring and want to know well, how much money should you be setting aside for health insurance. First and foremost, we always like to establish this is not a sales um, presentation. We are not going to be selling you anything. This is strictly educational. And our vision um, as a health insurance brokerage company is to be the go-to resource for Medicare and retiree health insurance. So we're very big about making sure we're educating our clients and those in the community so they really understand um, what's going on. And I love this, this picture right here of this pie because this is sort of how I got into the business. So I had gone to my dad and I said, you know, you're retired. How do you figure out what to do for your health insurance? And he goes, ah, I just call my girl at company XYZ and she and I figure it out together. 
And I said, but dad, she's only showing you her piece of the pie. She's not showing you the whole pie. And that's when it got really important and, and um, it really came to me that having a broker, somebody who represents all the insurance companies across the country or across the area is really important to making sure that our clients get the best service so that they can get the best possible plan for them. So this picture really represents uh, why we're brokers, why we represent so many different insurance companies out in the area. And then here's a picture of me and my dad. My dad is, again, the inspiration of why I got into the business. And I'm going to let Terry explain why he got into the business. So, you know, I, as Vicki mentioned, you know, we'll be married 30 years this, um, this October. And of those 30 years, I spent roughly 27 of those years in manufacturing in some capacity, either an hourly employee, a frontline supervisor, um, middle management, project management, quality, safety, you name it. I've worn a lot of different hats over the years. And, um, you know, our kids were empty nesters and our, our kids were out of the house and I hit a uh, milestone birthday and kind of sat back and said, you know, do I want to do, or do I want to be in manufacturing the rest of my life? And I was in a, a current role in, in my career that, you know, wasn't bringing me the most joy. Um, and I kind of sat back and looked and said, you know, when was I happiest? And it was when I was a frontline supervisor working directly with you know, my group of individuals and, and helping them understand the process and, and getting the job done together. And so I knew that I liked working with people um, rather than being, you know, leading projects. Um, and, you know, I saw what Vicki was doing and how happy and satisfied she was in, in her career. And I, you know, it was just kind of the stars aligned, kids were out of the house, you know, um, and, and I never saw myself leaving manufacturing, quite honestly, but uh, it has been the best transition and, and greatest move I've ever made. I, I am completely satisfied and I clearly see myself doing this um, forever. So. Yeah, we've got the best clients. They're, they're oh. so grateful. It's, it's really wonderful to work with really people who are so, yeah, so happy for us. So. We always think it's important to, to go over some terms because there's a lot of insurance terms that are out there that are, you know, thrown around all the time. And, you know, some people are familiar with some of them, but um, most of the time people don't understand all of them. So first we have premium. Premium is the monthly amount that you pay for your health insurance. Deductible. Deductible is the amount you have to pay at 100% before your health insurance will start paying for anything. Copay is a fixed cost. You know, you go to your primary care, it's 15. You go to a specialist, it's 50. Coinsurance is a percentage of the bill. So you pay 20%, you pay 50%. Maximum out of pocket, that's the most that you have to pay within the year. So that's always the stop gap, okay? And so that's a really important one because you always hear people say, oh, you know, so-and-so was in the hospital for 10 days and they had a bill that was over $100,000. Well, when you have a health insurance plan, um, for the most part, there's gonna be a maximum out of pocket. So you won't ever have those astronomical bills. Then we have insurance company or insurance carrier. Those two words are used interchangeably. That's simply the insurance, the company that's facilitating your health insurance. MVP, Excellus, United Healthcare, Aetna, uh, WellCare. Those are the, the big ones in our area. Then we have HMO. HMO means um, that you have in-network pricing. And if you go out of the network, for the insurance company, you are paying 100% out of pocket and that's called a health management organization, HMO. PPO um, is, uh, means you have in-network pricing and out-of-network pricing, but you typically should never have to pay 100% out of pocket if you go out of network. Then we have an HMO POS. POS stands for point of service, not the other POS stand uh, acronym. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> that means that you need to stay in network with HMO, but you're allowed to go out of network just a little bit with that POS. And how it typically works is like 
you can go out and network, you pay 30%, the plan pays 70%, maybe up to $3,000. But then once the plan pays $3,000 and you're still going out of network, you're now paying 100% out of pocket. Mm -hmm. Then we have agent. An agent in health insurance um, means that they are representing one insurance company. So like my dad, right? My dad was talking to an agent who is only offering up their insurance and not anything else um, in that's offered in the area. Brokers are what Terry and I are. And brokers mean that we have a contract with all the different area um, health insurances. And our job is to be an advocate for our clients. So um, the great thing about Medicare health insurance is that all the insurance companies are supposed are, are excuse me, all the insurance companies are required to pay us the same commission. So that really helps us to be very transparent with our clients to let them know that our job is to make sure that they have the best health insurance for their particular needs, not necessarily whichever insurance company is going to pay us the most money. And so we have a um, a value and a directive in our company that we treat every single one of our clients as if they were our parents and that we put the client before the sale. And so what that means is that sometimes we have clients that come in and they already have the right plan. And so we tell them that you have the right plan, stay on your plan, come back and see us next year because we'd rather lose the sale today and you know, acquire you as a client next year and then keep you as a client for the next 10, 20, 30 years, then try to get you your sale today and not do the right thing for you. So that's really important. The other thing to know too about um, brokers like working with us is that it doesn't cost anything to use our services. Our business model is just like your home and auto agent. So it doesn't cost anything to sit with us. Premiums don't go up by using us. And like I said, we do get paid a commission, but it's paid by the insurance companies. You don't have to pay us. And then what we do throughout the year is that we help our clients navigate through different medical situations. You know, somebody gets diagnosed with cancer. Unfortunately, we talk to them about, okay, this is how your plan's going to get covered. And, you know, should we maybe make a change? Somebody's got a problem with, with their, um, billing, you know, they got charged more than they're supposed to. We'll call the billing department and, and help work that through with them. So we're here throughout the year for them. It's not just a one and done. And I love this, this picture because this is sort of how everybody feels when it's time to leave their employer-based plan for health insurance and go out on their own. And they're sort of just standing in the doorway saying, what's next? What do I do? And you see, there's lots of different avenues that somebody could go in. And, and that is very indicative of what's happening with your particular situations because um, everybody's situation is different. And so one person, you know, they might be able to stay on COBRA and it might be affordable. Somebody else, you know, COBRA is super expensive. And so we go on traditional health insurance. Somebody else might qualify for um, the essential plan. And so we do that, um, you know, same thing with Medicare. Do I have to go to Medicare at 65? Maybe, maybe not. It all just depends on your particular situation. And so that's what we do is we help our clients to determine what's the best step forward for them. So we're gonna get into um, some down and dirty about the under 65. So when you are um, under 65, how do, you, how do you qualify for an under 65 plan? Um, obviously, just like the name talks about, you have to be under 65 years of age. If you are 65 and older, you are required to go to Medicare unless you have creditable coverage through your current employer. And we'll be talking about that quite a bit. Um, but the key phrase there is creditable coverage through your employer if you want to stay on it past 65. Um, under 65 health insurance is off, also um, determined on your income. And it also means that you have no employer-based coverage, okay? So if you have coverage that's offered by your employer, unfortunately, you have to go through them rather than going to get your own health insurance if you are under 65. 
Now, last week we had the American Rescue Plan um, presented and there was a couple things that have to do with health insurance and um, losing, health insur losing health insurance that I wanted to make sure that we touched upon. So first off, if you involuntarily lose coverage during April through September of this year, then your COBRA is 100% covered. Now, COBRA is the health insurance that your employer will offer up to you after you leave their employment. And traditionally, COBRA insurance means that you have to pay 102% of the actual premium. So what does that mean? So the premium very well could be $600, but your employer might be covering 400 and then you have to pay 200 while you're an employee. When you leave the employer's um, employment, <laughs> then the employer says, okay, we're gonna offer you up health insurance. You can keep the same exact health insurance that you have, but now you have to pay the full amount. So that full $600 and we get to charge you an extra 2% for admin administrative costs, okay? So a lot of times when people leave their employer plan, they you know, realize that, wow, their employer was paying a good portion of that health insurance. And you know that wasn't something that they had anticipated spending quite so much money on. Um, so if you voluntarily lose your health insurance and voluntarily lose your health insurance means that you are retiring, okay? You said to your employer, I'm going to leave. Then this American Rescue Plan where it pays for your health insurance, your COBRA from April through September, doesn't apply to you. But if you're downsized um, or, you know, they like to call it right-sized, <laughs> meaning that you, again, involuntarily lost coverage, you didn't ask for it, then April through September, you could get your COBRA, COBRA coverage paid in full, okay? The other thing that happened uh, with the American Rescue Plan is that the federal government says that your health insurance should not be more than 8% of your household income. And so we're gonna get into this a little bit more, but if you qualify for the, the marketplace, you can actually get a subsidy. So the federal government and New York State will help pay for your health insurance premiums and it's based on a sliding scale depending on what your income is and depending on what kind of plans you pick. These subsidies are going to be in effect. This 8% of household income is going to be in effect from 2021 through 2022. All right, so this is the traditional um, before last week's American Rescue Plan. This is um, the breakdown of the different types of plans that you could qualify for depending on your household income, okay? So the first column is how many people are you claiming on your taxes, which is, you know, how many people are in your household? And then you would go across and say, okay, how many, um, how much income are we anticipating for the year? And then that tells you which column you fall into. So the first column is Medicaid. Medicaid is um, provided by the federal government and the state, and there's no premium, no co-pays, um, great coverage. And then there's what's called the essential plan. The essential plan is designed for low-income people that don't qualify for Medicaid. It's a $20 a month um, per person plan, no deductible, all co-pays. And then we go on to the exchange or the marketplace. Those words are used interchangeably. And again, this is where you can get that sliding subsidy and um, after April 1st, New York State will have the updated numbers from the American Rescue uh, Plan. And so we'll be able to better understand um, what the income range would be for being able to get a subsidy. And then there's traditional health insurance. So basically this is anybody who doesn't qualify for a subsidy and um, is just paying the rack rate. In New York State, we do not have any um, underwriting laws in the state, which that just simply means that you cannot get charged extra on your premium for pre-existing conditions or 
um, depending on your age or depending on your smoking habits or depending on if you're male or female. In New York State, the price is the price and that's it. Um, so traditional health insurance, again, is for um, individuals who don't qualify for a subsidy and um, you know, it's pretty cut and dry. It's, you know, here's different plans and, and this is the way we're gonna go. So this- Hey Vicki, there, there was a question um, sure. regarding the American Rescue Plan. Is that subsidy only available in New York State? No, that is across the country. Oh, I was trying to go back. Um, the subsidy is across the country. This is a federal American Rescue Plan. Great question, thank you. And so that is somewhat different regarding the exchange subsidy or it'll be the same thing? Yeah, it'll be the same thing. We'll still go to the exchange to be able to see what kind of subsidies individuals will be able to receive. Um, it's just, we won't be able to see those new subsidies until April 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, it it looks like Darla has a quick question regarding the um, numbers on the chart. Sure. Um, yeah. So, so if we can... uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm looking at this this chart right here, mm -hmm. and uh, it says exchange, and it says twenty four thousand nine hundred eighty to forty nine thousand nine hundred sixty. Mm -hmm. So does that mean when I retire, and before I turn 65 mm -hmm. that my income if I have like a pension and like I'm withdrawing from my SIP or mm -hmm. IRA mm -hmm. I add those things together they have to be below 49,960 exactly yep so think about all the income that's coming into your checking account okay you know so IRA distributions wages unemployment social, social security, security everything um pensions you have rental to income off. any mm -hmm. income yep okay and and then and you and then you get an eight percent subsidy is that what you're saying no the no. what oh. what's happening is that the american rescue plan says that your insurance should not be more than eight percent of your household income Oh. So if your health insurance ends up being more than, let's say your health insurance ends up being 10% of your household income, then you would get a 2% subsidy. Got it. Okay. Okay. All so right. it's a little tough right now because the, the American Rescue Plan is brand new. And so there's no actual hard numbers for me to show you yet until April 1st. Okay. All right. Um, Oh, okay. And so these numbers are what we were using until last week when the American Rescue uh, Plan came into effect. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking the question. All right. So this is just a quick um, overview of the essential plan. Again, it's a fantastic plan. If you qualify for it, $20 um, a month for the premium. And you can see that the copays are really um, reasonable. So when we talk about um, the marketplace exchange or traditional health insurance, we have four different meta levels, okay? And each one of them has their own positives and negatives. So the first one is the platinum. Platinum is going to be your most expensive in premium. You're gonna be paying, you know, close to, uh, you know, $900 a month for an individual. You have no co-pays, or excuse me, you have no deductible and all co-pays. And for most part, you have a very low maximum out of pocket, like $2,000. Mm -hmm. Then we move to gold. Gold could be a no deductible or a very low deductible, $600 or maybe $1,200. And then you go and pay all copays. Now you're still paying a pretty hefty premium. Um, it's about $700 per person on a gold. Then we have silver. Um, there's a lot of interesting hybrid silver plans that are out there. And what that means is that you have some coverage that you just pay a copay for. So you go to your primary care or you go to a specialist, you're only paying your copay. But then other services you would pay towards a deductible, like an outpatient surgery or an in hospital stay. 
those you would have to pay the deductible first before the um, health insurance comes in and offsets any of those costs. So silver is gonna be a little bit more economical in your pricing. And then finally we have bronze. So bronze is gonna be the most economical. And you're gonna be about um, $400 a month for a single plan with the bronze. And this is where you're gonna to tend to pay the most deductible. All right, so your deductible is gonna be anywhere between five to $8,000, pardon me. Um, a few of the plans will allow you to go see your primary care like three times without having to pay um, towards that deductible. For the most part though, you are paying 100% out of pocket until you hit that deductible and then you have that maximum out of pocket as well. Bronze plans are designed for individuals who don't typically use their health insurance and it's really more there to be catastrophic coverage. All right, so the premium tax credit or the subsidy that we've been talking about, um, you can do it one of two ways. You can take your subsidy one of two ways. You can either have it lower your monthly premium or you can take it as a tax deduction at the end of the year. So my clients who are consultants or who own their own business and their income fluctuates greatly, um, we go ahead, we put their information and their anticipated income for the year into the marketplace to see what kind of subsidy they would get. But they don't go for lowering their premium for the month. They actually um, end up taking the claim on their taxes. So that way, um, the reason why they do that is so that they don't have to pay anything back to the state. Because if you um, under report your income to get a higher subsidy, and then at the end of the year, report your income on your taxes, and then the state comes back and says, whoa, 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 uh, you made a lot more money than you said you would. Now you need to give back that money that we gave you in your subsidy. All right. So it does give you a little bit of a benefit of, of you know, picking which way you want to do that. So traditional health insurance is, you know, individuals who are under 65, not covered by an employer-based plan, does not qualify for Medicaid, the essential plan, premium tax credit on the marketplace, or um, Medicare. And so we have three insurance companies in our area to be able to choose from. So you got Fidelis, you have Excellus, you got MVP. And so one of the things that we do with our clients is we help narrow down all the options to like a good, better, best doesn't mean that you can't pick a plan that's outside of our good, better, best, but we try to do that um, investigating before on, on your behalf so that you don't have to literally look at 30 different plans because it gets overwhelming. Hey, Vic, real quick, um, you know, you said about 900 for platinum, around 700 for gold and 400 for bronze. Uh, you didn't touch base on what silver traditionally costs. Yeah, so silver is going to be around five hundred to six hundred dollars, depending on which plan that you pick. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so let's talk about timing for each of the different options for under sixty-five. When can you get onto any of these plans? So with Medicaid, you can get on a Medicaid plan at any time, and it'll start the first of the prior month, or your current month, I should say, or the first of the following month. So what does that mean? If you had called the state on March 14th and said, I need health insurance and I qualify for Medicaid, then your Medicaid would have start March 1st. If you had called the state today, we're after the 15th and said, I need health insurance and I qualify for Medicaid, your health insurance will start April 1st. And then your Medicaid health insurance will keep for fiscal year meaning that if you start in April 1st of 2021, you get to keep that Medicaid coverage until March 31st of 2022, no matter what your income is. As long as you qualified for when you started, you get to keep it for an entire year. Same thing with the essential plan, okay? It works exactly the same way. You enroll at any time and it starts either the current month or the following month and you keep it for the entire fiscal year. When we talk about the exchange or the marketplace, you have 60 days 
within loss of coverage to be able to get onto a plan. So let's say you're gonna retire at the end of this month, March 31st, and you need health insurance to start April 1st, okay? You would apply for that before April 1st and you would be able to go ahead. Um, let's say you lost coverage the end of this month and then you didn't think about um, your health insurance until June, right? So we had April and we had May. If you called us up in June and said, I need health insurance, we would say, unfortunately, we cannot help you and you're gonna have to wait until annual election period. Mm -hmm. Annual election period is uh, November 1st through December 15th. That's when everybody who's under 65 gets to pick their health insurance and we go over all of that with our clients. And then it starts January 1st. Um, on the exchange and with traditional health insurance, your coverage is annual. So January through December. So if you start it in April, it technically can end in December. And then you obviously, like I just talked about, have the opportunities to change plans for January 1st. However, it will automatically just roll over for you. So, you know, don't ever feel like it's going to go away. All right, so with COVID-19, we've been seeing a lot of different enrollment periods. Um, we do have an open enrollment period right now. So if you don't have coverage and you're under 65, you can actually get on a plan right this minute, okay? That's one of the nice things about New York. They've been keeping the enrollment um, period open because of the pandemic. All right, so we talked about COBRA a little bit at the beginning. So. A COBRA again is continuing your employer coverage. Um, and that's if you um, lose your health insurance, either voluntary or involuntary. Coverage is available for your, um, for employees, spouses, former spouses and dependent children. Um, so like in our situation, when Terry and I got married, we were very young. Um, and so we were able to keep my father's health insurance and we paid for COBRA. Um, that was way back in 1991, and we had to pay $410 a month. Our health insurance was, I think, as much or maybe more than our rent was per oh, month yeah. at that more point. Right. <laughs> um, you have 60 days to decide if you want to go on to COBRA. And how that works is, um, you know, you stop your health, you stop your employment with your employer they have like 14 days to let you know about COBRA. Then you have like 14 days to let them know if you wanna be on COBRA. And if you elect COBRA, it actually backs, back dates to that first day that you no longer are working. Um, you may stay on COBRA for 36 months if your employer is a New York state based. If your employer is based in a different state, you may only get 18 months. And we talked about that the cost is 102% of the premium. And the time that you can switch off a COBRA, so let's say you decide, you know what, I'm just going to keep my COBRA for the rest of the year, you can then decide during open enrollment that November 1st through December 15th to leave the COBRA plan and go on to your own plan, but you can only do it during that open enrollment period, okay? The big thing that I want to talk about with um, COBRA and Medicare is they don't mix, Okay. COBRA is not considered creditable coverage in the eyes of Medicare. And Terry's going to hit on this a little bit more too when he talks about Medicare. But the key that I want you to remember is that if you are Medicare eligible, you should not be on a COBRA-based plan because that will open you up for having to pay lifetime penalties. Okay? The other thing to know, too, is that you're not required to stay on your employer-based COBRA plan. So a lot of times, like I said earlier, people find out that, you know, their health insurance that they have through their employer is pretty expensive. And maybe they don't need that much health insurance right now. They're pretty healthy. You know what? They can go on a bronze plan. They hardly go to the doctors. Um, they don't need that, that really high platinum plan that their employer is paying for anymore. So um, always check it out. We're always happy to look at people's COBRA plan uh, against what's offered out there to help them determine which is the best path for them. So again, just make sure you're comparing the benefits between your COBRA plan and a traditional or exchange marketplace plan. 
So let's just talk about the different steps um, when you're going to go and retire and you're still under 65. So first and foremost, de determine your retirement date. Um, a lot of times what happens is people say, I'm retiring March 15th. Okay, when does your health insurance end? Is your health insurance going to end at the end of the month or is your health insurance going to end on March 15th? Um, some employers will keep you for the whole month. Some will cut you off right immediately um, on the day that your last working day. So that's really important to understand when are you going to lose health insurance? The second part is understanding what your household income is. So like we were just talking with Darla, um, you know, how much is your anticipated wages so far for the year? Are you collecting social security? What's your IRA distributions? Do you have any pensions? Um, you know, do you plan on having any capital gains this year? To understand if you qualify for a subsidy, we need to know all of that information uh, because we need to report it to New York State for them to come back and tell us if you qualify for a subsidy or not. So then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pick a health insurance plan. And so you're gonna call either Terry, myself or another broker and set up an appointment. And during the appointment, we're going to put in all the information into the New York State Exchange, and we're going to see what the exchange says that you come back with a subsidy if you if you qualify for one. And then we're going to go and we're going to pick a plan, and we're going to you know go through platinum, gold, silver, bronze, and talk about you know the different benefits, and you know take a look at our good, better, best, and figure out the one that makes the most sense for you. The good thing to remember is that you're only making a decision for one year. Okay, because again, we have open enrollment that you can make a change every single year. And then lastly is, you know, retirement, you know, this is the time to celebrate. And so you're going to have your last day of employer coverage, and we're going to make sure that your health insurance is going to start the first day of retirement. All right, so how's everybody feeling? Do we have any questions, Terry, that we need to be addressing right now? No, we've addressed them all so far. I, I don't see any additional questions. Um, you know, I know we've got, um, you know, just a quick time check. It's, it's about 740 almost now. The next half of this um, presentation is going to be um, insurance beyond age 65. Um, so predominantly Medicare. I know that, uh, you know, we had um, a couple join, you know, we've got Ann and Jerry join. And I don't think that I know whether their focus was under 65 or Medicare. Um, so um, yes, Amy, um, Medicare or COBRA can only last up to 36 months in New York state, 18 months um, in other states. Yep, great question. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the second half of this and um, you know, I'm going to kind of go through it at a little higher pace because I'm going to try to wrap this up by eight o'clock for everybody um, and probably about a half an hour worth of slides that I'm putting to 20 minutes here. So who's eligible for Medicare? Um, individuals that turn age 65 and older. A lot of times people think that, oh, because they're eligible for Social Security at age 62, that they'll be eligible for Medicare and that's not the case. So you need to be 65 or older unless you have been on social security disability. Now that's different. If you were out um, on long-term disability through an employer and you were on that disability for 24 months, it becomes long-term and you end up on social security disability. Once it's 24 months, you're transitioned over and put onto Medicare regardless of your age. I do have um, um, clients that are younger than my own children that um, or on social security disability and are Medicare eligible. So um, you don't necessarily have to be 65, but most are. Individuals with Lou Gehrig's disease or have um, a permanent kidney failure and they have dialysis and need, or need kidney transplants, those individuals are also eligible. Um, you need to be a US citizen or permanent legal resident living in the US for at least five years. And then there's some government employees or retirees who have not paid in Social Security, but have paid the Medicare payroll tax. Um, so the question is, is, do you have to enroll? And the answer is maybe. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so here's the thing. Vicky touched on it earlier. If you are, if you have a plan through an employer, if you're 65 and older and you have a plan through an employer or you have a plan through your spouse's employer, this happens a lot of times, you'll have one spouse that's older than the other, the other is continuing to work and you're covered on your spouse's plan and you can stay on your spouse's plan as long as their plan has that provision for you. Some, some employer plans say no when the spouse turns 65, we want them to um, transition onto Medicare, but as long as your spouse's employer plan uh, says you can continue to stay on it and it's considered creditable and creditable means it meets the minimum federal government guidelines, then you could stay on that plan. Um, if you're going to continue to work, many individuals work well up until their late 60s, 70s, even later. And as long as it meets the federal minimum guideline, you can delay your part A and B. Um, however, you do have to enroll if you no longer have insurance through an employer or if you're on a COBRA plan through your employer. So the minute you turn 65, the government looks at that plan, even though it's creditable when you're an employed, the minute it becomes COBRA, the government says, sorry, that plan is no longer creditable just because it's gone through COBRA. So while it was creditable, while you were working, fine, COBRA, no, no more. So like you said, those don't mix. Um, if you have retiree medical coverage through an employer, you have to still enroll in part A and B. And if your employer had less than 20 uh, employees, typically those are not creditable plans. Um, if you de deny your part A social security, you cannot enroll if you deny your Part A Medicare, you cannot enroll in Social Security. So Part A, people will a lot of times remain on their employer plan and take Part A because it has no monthly premium as long as you've worked 10 years in your life. Um, however, there is one um, caveat to that is that if you're going to work stay employed, keep an employer plan and pick up part A, you can no longer contribute to a health savings account with your employer. You could continue to collect the funds that you've contributed all those years or however long you have, but you can no longer contribute to it any longer. So Medicare part A and B, there's sometimes some confusion out there. Individuals think their health care is totally covered for it when they retire, and um, that's just not the case. So the things that original Medicare Part A and B do not cover is long-term custodial care. So when you you know people get to the age where they need um, you know uh, permanent assistance, you know nursing homes, those types of things, Medicare doesn't cover that. Um, Medicare also does not cover any care outside of the United States. Medicare does not provide hearing, vision, or dental coverage. Medicare won't cover cosmetic surgery, acupuncture, other alternative care, routine foot care. They also don't cover prescription drugs. So they say that's part D, you need to go find that on your own. Also with part A, which is your hospitalization and part B, which is your medical, which means primary care, specialists, outpatient surgeries, um, physical therapy, all the things that aren't done in the hospital. There's also deductibles and co-payments. They're not paying 100% of those things either. So Medicare coverage choices. When you are no longer working and you're, you don't have an employer plan any longer, there are three uh, choices at the, at the higher level that you have to be one of the three choices. Within one of these three choices, there are several specific plans or, or, or um, policies that you can choose, but the three choices are all include and require you to have part A and B. You're required to take your part A, you're required to take part B. Now part A, does not have a monthly premium, as I stated, as long as you've worked 10 years in your life. However, in the first um, 60 days, you're responsible for a $1,470 
uh, deductible. From day 60 through 90, it's $371 a day. And from 90 to 150, it's $742 a day. And from day 151 on, you're responsible for 100% of your hospitalization costs. And these are lifetime days. So most of us aren't in 60 days, but you use your days up throughout your life. Now, Part B has a premium to it. The minimum premium is $148.50. That's this year. Each year, this premium increases. And it will increase. You don't get in at one price and keep that price the rest of your life. It increases every year. It's a monthly premium. And this is the minimum. If you're a high income earner, depending on your situation, whether you're single or married, the, the um, government has guidelines and says, if you earn between this bracket, you'll pay more. So it could be 250, it could be 350, it could be 450, could even be $550 a month for your Part B premium. This year, the federal government says you pay the first $203 of deductible for the services through the year. And then after that, there's a split. They'll pay 80% of everything and you'll pay 20% of everything. There's also no stop or maximum out of pocket. So just like A, you know, you could end up with a 30, 40, 50,000, $100,000 um, out of pocket, um, what you're going to owe. With Part B, you'll pay 20% of whatever services you incur. Now, option one, I told you there are three options that, the, that you have once you turn 65. Option one is having an A and B through the federal government and having D, prescription drug coverage, through a private insurance company. The government requires, they passed a law in 2006 that said everyone must have prescription drug coverage at age 65 and older, even if they don't take prescription drugs, it's required. They don't provide it to you. They require you have it. They tell you to go find it from a private insurance company. And if you don't do that and sign up for it in time, the government will levy a lifetime monthly penalty on you. So it's very important to make sure you get your prescription drug coverage when you're supposed to get it. This is not free. Their private insurance companies provide it and they range anywhere from about $7.50 to about $95 a month. So that's option one. Now option two is having A and B and D and then adding what's known as a Medigap plan, the dark blue box in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. That Medigap plan as the supplement plan and Medigap plan they are the exact same thing. The term supplement is actually a product in the insurance industry. A supplement plan is the exact same thing as a Medigap plan. And as I like to use the word Medigap instead of supplement because Medigap really kind of describes it better. It closes the gaps that original Medicare leaves. So in a Medigap plan, for instance, a plan F that was available prior to 2020 or a plan G that's still available today, they essentially, you pay them a premium and then you don't write any checks for any of your health care. So it's a it's an expensive, as you can see, Vicki's got it, you know, posted there. Plan apps used to be about $250 a month. If you were 65 prior to January 2020, you could still get one. So they have done away with it for new people come turning 65 after January 2020. Um, but anybody that was 65 prior to January 2020 is still eligible for Plan Fs. Plan Gs are about $185 a month, um, and they'll pay that 20% um, for all of your visits. They'll pay the hospital per day charges that we talked about. And then lastly, your third choice is to jump that dotted line. We like to call it a picket fence. You need to pick. You need to be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. When you go over to the right-hand side, it's considered an Advantage plan. An Advantage plan is known as Part C. Part C, think of it as combination. It's a combination of everything you get in A, everything you get in B, and they include prescription drug coverage. There are a few out there that don't include prescription drug coverage, but those are, those are specifically meant for our veterans. Our veterans are able to obtain their prescription drug coverage through the VA or TRICARE. Or, um, so they're able to pick advantage plans that don't have a component, a drug component. For the regular population that doesn't have that, 
it's senseless to sign up for one that doesn't have drug coverage because you would be you would be assessed that lifetime penalty. So when we're looking at Part C's, we're looking at everything you get in A, everything you get in B. The federal government actually mandates the Advantage plans give you that. So you can't go backwards, okay? And then it has your drug coverage in it as well. These can range from $0 a month up to $256 a month. Advantage plans are the one industry that goes against everything we were taught as children that if it's too good to be true, it probably is. There's no such thing as a free lunch. There's got to be a catch. The reason plans start at zero premium and can still be very good is that the federal government is actually giving the Advantage Plan companies $900 a month on your behalf so that they manage your health care. Your Part A, if you didn't work 10 years in your life, is worth $475 a month. That's what they're charging people this year for it. You actually paid into Part A your entire working career through your FICA. Your FICA deductions were for two things, Social Security and your Part A. So the federal government mandates that Medicare Advantage plans give you everything you, that they're going to give you in Part A. So that's worth $475. Part B, they're charging you $148.50 every month, traditionally taking it out of your Social Security or you're writing them a quarterly check if you're not collecting Social Security. So that's $625 a month. And then the federal government, if they are going to, they're having the Advantage plans do all the paperwork. The Advantage plans are saying, well, if we're going to do all this, we need to be compensated for taking care of the paperwork, the administration. So it's a $900 a month average. When you stay on original Medicare, your bill truly goes to the government and they're paying a kid to sit in a room and write a check back to your provider, hospital, doctor, specialist. And so they don't want to pay that person to do that. They'd much rather the healthcare companies manage your uh, healthcare. So I talked briefly about if you're a high income earner, if you're single, you're married, there's brackets. So if your income exceeds a certain thing, we won't keep this up long. Take a peek, see where your income is. The Medicare, while you're treated as a single individual, the point here is your healthcare is single individual. However, the government's still looking at your family income. So if you're married, they're gonna look at your married income. And what they do is they're gonna look at Currently, they'll look at 2019's income. So if you had a banner year two years ago, they're going to be looking at 2019. 2020, you haven't filed your taxes yet for. So you could have a period where you're still paying a high amount, even though you've retired and you've lowered your income. There are ways to uh, appeal and send and ask them. There's forms to fill out to say, my income is changing. You'd have to show documentation as such to help that get reduced earlier. Again, this is just the three types that I talked about. One was A and B and D. This leaves you at the highest level of risk. There is no stop. There's no maximum out of pocket. Two, this is kind of like, you know, the, the Cadillac of insurances, but you're going to have high premiums, okay? Three, the Advantage plans. It's a couple of things I didn't touch base with on Advantage plans that are, that are not only is it a combination of A, B, and D, here are some of the things Advantage Plans do for you. First and foremost, the most important thing is it sets a maximum out of pocket for you. So you have some level of security knowing, hey, you know, even though I have this zero premium plan that includes drug coverage, if something drastic were to happen to me, I had a terrible medical year, $7,550 is the maximum amount of medical bills that you'll pay in a year. That's this year. Each year, the government sets what that maximum amount of pocket can be. So you have that security of knowing, hey, I'm probably not going to lose my house because, you know, I was in the hospital for a month and ran up $100,000 or $200,000 in, in hospital bills. $7,550 is the maximum this year in medical expense. The other things that Advantage plans can offer you that you don't get in option one or two, hearing, vision, and dental. They're not great, but they can offer you some of that. Um, for individuals that are on those lower ends of income that Vicki had, had talked about, essential plan, Medicaid individuals, there are all kinds of plans out there for individuals that have both Medicare and Medicaid. In fact, Joe Namath is talking about that all the time on your television. You know, when he's in your living room every night, you know, having dinner with you, 
He's talking about a dual special needs plan, plans that are specifically there for people with Medicaid and Medicare. They're getting rides, they're getting meals, they're getting all those extra benefits. Those are not the general public. Low income subsidies are out there to help people pay for their prescription drugs. There's Medicare savings programs that are available for insulin individuals. And the New York State has a wonderful, wonderful program. We don't get anything for it, but we encourage everybody that's 65 and older to, to get into New York State Epic. Um, it's, a, it's a great pharmaceutical assistance program. Three ways to apply. Online is traditionally the easiest. For those of you that maybe don't like doing things online, you certainly can call um, Social Security. Um, there are also local numbers. So if you needed a local number, we could you know, reach out to us and we could provide you the local numbers. And then because of COVID, there's no longer the ability to, to, to sign up in person. There's enrollment periods. So first and foremost, if you're working and you're gonna work past age 65, you can keep your coverage. And prior to retirement, you just wanna make sure you're signing up, meeting with Vicki or I prior to age 65, getting your Medicare to start so that it's in line with you know, your last day of coverage through your employer, get everything to go smoothly. That's what's known as a special election period. You can do it anytime throughout the year. If you are under 65, currently you know, not working, you're on, let's say the marketplace or one of those other under 65 plans, then you'll have what's known as the initial enrollment period. And that is the seven months around your birth month. So you have your birth month, three months prior to your birth month and three months post your birth month to sign up for original Medicare. If you miss that window, then there's what's known as the general enrollment period or general election period. And it's right now, January 1st through March 31st. However, this is the one that incurs a lifetime penalty and you have a delayed start date. It wouldn't even start until July 1st this upcoming year. And for individuals here where the clock's ticking at the end of the month, if April 1st, they try to sign up, they'll be told, sorry, they have to wait until next January, February, March to sign up and it won't go into effect until July of 2022. So very important that you hit your windows in signing up. Mm -hmm. There's the annual enrollment period, which is used to be called the open enrollment period. This is your annual time to make a selection for the upcoming year. And that runs from October 15th through December 7th with the plan starting January 1st. Special enrollment periods. These are what I talked about, retirement. So you decide to work past age 65, you're gonna lose coverage. That creates a special enrollment period. You have loss of creditable coverage. You're working past 65, your employer goes out of business or decides to downsize or you know, just, just you decide one day to walk in and say, I'm quitting. Um, you know, it wasn't a planned retirement, but you still lost coverage. Or your spouse lost coverage, right? Your spouse was carrying you and you lost coverage. That creates a special enrollment period. If you move outside of your current service area and you move to a different county where different plans are offered, that creates a special enrollment period you can change. If you have Medicaid, you actually have several different times of the year that you can make changes. And then if you have low income subsidies or extra help, that will also create um, special enrollment period. So the annual enrollment period, October 15th through December 7th is the time that you're essentially um, looking at the plan for next year that you'd like. We meet with everybody each year. And because each year we have to test with all of the carriers to ensure that we know their plans and we're prepared to cover them for the following year. What we do is we do an educational Zoom meeting like this in, in bulk, go over the plan changes, and then we reach out to the individuals and say, hey, you know, are you happy with the plan that you're currently on? If you're not, you know, we can make, you know, a one, do a one-on-one -on -one and make a change. Also, we want to know what's going on with your changes. As your health changes, as your prescriptions need change, as those things change, we want to know to make sure that you still are on the on the right plan for you. So October 15th through December 7th are key dates. Um, planning steps for healthcare and retirement. So the first thing you want to do is really get wrap your head around when you're going to retire or lose that coverage uh, when you're beyond age 65. Um, you want to ensure that you confirm that date and then confirm the last day the employer is going to cover you. 
Some employers, I've had clients that have worked till let's say June 3rd or June 4th or June 5th, and the employer will cover them through the end of the June, June 30th. Some employers say you work till June 5th, we're covering you till June 5th. Well, that makes a difference because you want no gap in your coverage. So if, if you were gonna be covered till June 30th, you'd want Medicare Part A and B to start July 1st, as well as you know, your prescription drug coverage and your Medigap plan or your Advantage plan. If your employer was gonna say June 5th was your last day of coverage, well then of course you want your Medicare to start June 1st. So what you'd have a five day, you know, um, uh, overrun of, of the two, you don't want a 25 or 30 day gap in your coverage, okay? So understand when your last day of work is gonna be, coordinate your um, time to sign up. Usually I tell people that don't have Medicare A and B cards, start that process three months before retirement. Get with social security, sign up for A and B, tell them you're gonna have a loss of coverage and you want that to start that July 1st date or whatever the date is. The first, your plans always start the first day of a particular month. So you're always gonna to wanna to coordinate that with your loss of coverage. Once you get your Medicare card, then you can reach out and make an appointment with myself or Vicki. And you know, during that appointment, we'll choose a plan and you know, we'll go ahead, take care of all the um, you know, application process and it'll, it'll start the first day of your retirement. So it's really the three key steps in um, picking your plans. So I know I didn't stop to take a breath. I didn't see any <laughs> questions come in. I think everybody's hair was probably blowing back as I was <laughs> rattling through that in 20 minutes. But um, if you have no, questions, you we're yeah. still here. Feel free to ask questions, even if it's something I didn't cover and you know, you've got a specific thing that you, you've been, you joined the meeting. I know you've been patient and sat through an hour of uh, um, presentation. I know that can be sometimes yeah. daunting. So, you know, we always like to tell all of our clients, you know, friends don't let friends navigate health insurance on their own. So utilize us as a resource, you know, reach out, let us help you. That's what we're here for. Um, and we do presentations like this, um, twice a month. We mm -hmm. also do once a month, the, uh, second Wednesday of every month at six 30, we do a zoom call just like this. And we just go over Medicare. It's a Medicare one one and we do a whole hour on Medicare. So, mm -hmm. um, feel free to reach out, go to our website, healthinsurance-easy.com. It's right at the bottom of the screen there. If you go to resources and then you'll see presentations, you can um, uh, sign up for those right there. Um, but like Terry said, we'd be happy to hang on the call for a little longer and answer any questions that anybody might have. Hey, Vicki, um, Darla asked if we could go back to the slide with IEP, GEP, and AEP. Sure. Yeah. Oh, and oh. So sorry. Oh. I'll get, I'll get us back there, I promise. <laughs> so Darla did, Darla, did you have a specific question regarding the, the slide that you wanted me to answer for you? Well, um, I was just up. trying to jot some notes down. Sure. And so, I, so while she's pulling that up, so again, your initial enrollment period, it's a seven month window around your birth month. That one right so there. I, so what I, what, I'm, what I mean is, is if your birth month, what is your birth month? June. June. So if your birthday, with the exception of June 1st, people that are born on the 1st, this always slides up a month. But if your birthday is any day in June, technically, your Medicare A and B will start June 1st for you. Okay. okay. So if you if you start collecting Social Security prior to age 65, they're going to they're going to automatically assume you want it, they're going to automatically enroll you. If you're not collecting social security, then manually you have to do that. What this initial enrollment period, IEP, is saying that you can initiate any time during this seven month window. So your birth month is in June. So that means you've got the three months prior to June to start the process. It would still start June 1st for you. Or you have three months after your 65th birthday to sign up for Medicare. 
Okay. Okay. Now, general enrollment period, this is not a period you want to use. This is a, uh-oh, I got in trouble. I missed my window. And so this is where people get confused a lot because they work beyond their 65th birthday. Very common for people to work that 66 in two months or three months because they want their full Medicare age, right? And they want to Social collect security. the most. And so they'll say, well, I didn't sign up during my seven month window. Oh, I, I guess I have to sign up during general election period. Not the case because you're going to have a loss of coverage because you were working, as long as you had coverage while you were working, I mean, as long as you had coverage, then you have loss of, loss of coverage and you could start into a plan in Medicare the day you lose your coverage, okay? So the general election period is for people that messed up, okay? okay. So you, you don't wanna use that unless you yep. have to. Yep. And, and then, but that is January 1st through March 31st and they'll delay the start till July 1st of that year. Okay. And then open enrollment. You're, you're gonna hear that actually called annual election period now. Um, and that runs from October 15th through December 7th. This is the time each year, just like you have an employer, they come to you every year in November and they say, hey, we've got a choice of two plans. Here they are, make your choice. Well, that's what this is. This is when you get all this mail. This is when you get all the television commercials, all the radio commercials, all the phone calls that you're not supposed to get. This period of time is the time that they say, hey, come join our plan. You pick it, it starts January 1st. Okay. Well, I, I've got to tell you, I've attended different different workshops. I attended a workshop uh, through ARP, for example, mm -hmm. and the slides that the two of you have uh, presented here have been much clearer and easier to understand than other things I've seen. So thank you. Yes, I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, Darla. That is the greatest compliment is if we can make this easy, then we have done our job. So thank you yep. very much. Thank you. Yeah, it was very wonderful presentation. Do you take um like yeah. people can still come in to talk with you in person, right? Um, restricted. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we do a lot of pres we do a lot of conversations with clients through Zoom. Um, okay. but we do have offices in Linden Oaks, and we are more than happy to meet people there. Mm -hmm. And um, if somebody's homebound, Terry will go to their home as well. Okay. No, that's good to know. Great no, question. Thank you, Peggy. Wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Terry. Thank we really appreciate you um, sharing all of your wealth of knowledge. I know I've taken a lot of notes because I'm considering retirement uh, in the next couple of years myself. So, <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're happy to, to give you some ideas so you can start planning for it. Because especially when you retire before you qualify for Medicare, health insurance is probably going to be one of the most expensive parts of retirement. And so we'd be, you know, more than happy to, you know, give you some ideas of what those costs would be. Okay. Great. Thank you. Hey, Zile. Hi, Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. I have a question about the American uh, Rescue Plan. This is yeah. for New York State or the whole country in the 50 whole states? Whole country, but it's only um, geared for people who are under 65. Okay. By the way, though, if, if I'm not living in New York State, so I have to go to that state to apply for it, or I can apply it from here and... We can use if, it in another state. Right. So if you decide to move out of New York State, then mm -hmm. we would um, help you either um, find a plan in that new state if we have our license there. So I have my mm -hmm. license in Delaware, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, and Florida, aside mm -hmm. from New York. Mm -hmm. um, if not, then we would give you the instructions on how to go about and getting a plan for those particular states because all the health insurance that um, that is being offered in New York State is only good in New York State. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from the supplement plans, supplement plans will um, transcend across state lines. So this this lower left hand okay. corner that uh -huh. goes across all the state lines, but mm -hmm. all the other health insurance under 65 and Advantage plans, they are state and, and sometimes county specific. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, I, well, that's nice. 
to know yeah. that they have this. So this is a more like a the federal plan or something uh, for this new well, plan here. The the American Rescue Plan is not mm -hmm. actually health insurance. It's really mm -hmm. just a um, a bill that the federal government put into place to help individuals because of the pandemic. So because um, New and Sam are 65, it really mm -hmm. doesn't apply to either one of you. No, I mean, no, I am Vila's, still, I'm, Vila's I'm, Oh, that's right. I, Vila, I always think that you're over 65. I'm so sorry, no, just Sam. <laughs> yeah, just Sam. <laughs> yeah, so um, thank you for reminding me. So yeah, mm -hmm. after April, Mm -hmm. We can take a look to see if you qualify for more subsidies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, so, so the the Cobra the Cobra you didn't have involuntary loss of coverage because you retired. Mm -hmm. I retired, so I just right. Yeah. So, so, so that wouldn't work. That. But we can we can look at the marketplace health insurance um, to see if it's make sure it's not more than eight percent of okay. your household. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Sorry thank about you. that, Vile. <laughs> no, I know you have so many clients. You. <laughs> right? Thank you. It's true, but still, I should remember that. <laughs> Great information, though. Thank you. Say so hi to Tommy for me, Vile. Okay, I will. Thank you. He, <laughs> hopefully, he comes visit uh, holidays. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, again. Thank if you've got you. more thank questions, you. please reach thank out. Um, you know, we're, we're here to help you out. We're in the community. We want to make sure that you've got all the information that you need to be able to make the best decision for you. So, again, this is our website and this is our um, phone number.